Hello, it's Lion here with Hobbies of Man. Once again, and today is time for another Kaiju number eight chapter review. Today we're going to be looking at chapter 79. And so, um, I do have news today. Apparently, um, the cover for volume 9 or 11, I can't remember, was recently shown. And uh, it's really cool. It has this kind of like minty color to it. I'll put it up on the screen now in case you guys are interested in looking at it. And um, yeah, that's really all there is to it. So let's move on to the chapter. So it starts off right where the last one ended. Kikoru is about to be attacked. And um, the, the guy that is watching over her or watching her, her stats and her, um, her vitals says that she can't win. Uh, she gets attacked by Kaiju number 15. And uh, she doesn't manage to dodge, but she manages to... Um, or sorry, no, she does manage to dodge. And um, the guy is excited. He's like, oh, it's awesome. It lives up to its reputation. But it does not because Kikoru gets captured or grabbed by number 15 and damages her, her armor with this kind of like breath attack right out of its face, which is kind of cool. Um, her right arm gets uh, damaged. They have to bypass it in order to fix it. And, uh, well, this guy's having, like, a crisis, and I don't really care too much about him. But it's interesting to see, like, the feelings of the backline uh, people, the support staff, uh, as they deal with this, right? This guy's like, I couldn't save uh, Mr. Shinomiya. I can't let his daughter die, too. I gotta figure something out. As Kikoro gets more and more damaged, um, they're uh, trying to give her treatment through the suit but it's not really working and um well it's kind of a dire situation um the guy requests uh, the current director the old guy that was friends with uh with Isao, um to kind of change some situation so that they can provide her aid uh because they can't lose their future linchpin but uh kikoru was like no you guys gotta wait number nine uh, won't hesitate to uh, to attack if we lower our defenses even just a tiny bit. Uh, please give me a chance. I will be able to beat this thing. Um, and apparently it's because she's close to something. She's as close to um, communing, I guess is the right word, with her mother through the suit. Because if you guys remember, this used to be her mom's uh, numbers weapon. And Kikuru has adopted it as her own. And um, apparently this is a situation that happens. These suits are haunted. And not really. It's more like... Um, you guys ever watch Pacific Rim? There's that kind of merging, right? They go into the drift and they combine. And so they see each other's memories. Well, more or less what happens is that the suit is a kaiju essence. A person wears the suit and they combine the same way that we've seen Hoshina and number 10 combine. And when the user dies and the weapon system uh, remains, there is some sort of connection that uh, remains, right? Which would be kind of like um, Riley's uh, memories of the drift with his brother affecting his drift with uh, Mako in, in uh, Pacific Rim, right? So it's kind of how that works, right? And uh, she sees this, this vision of her mother while she's using the numbers weapon. Apparently it's a ghost. It's a rare phenomenon that happens um, with a predecessor's numbers weapon. Uh, apparently the Northern Division reported about this many years ago, but they haven't really understood it too much. But it's more or less like a memory embedded into the Kaiju system, right? So, yeah. Um, Kikoru sees her mother in front of her and sees her mother attacking and being better than her. And the kaiju apparently also kind of looks at Kikoru and it like is disappointed in what he has to deal with, um, which is kind of interesting. It gives us this kind of uh, look at the difference between a number system and whatever happened to Kafka, right? So it's kind of interesting. Um, and the gap is, is so small that she can almost feel her mother. And so she starts to manage to get to that level and even though she's not exactly on the money, she's close to um, to her mother's level now. She manages to dodge, and number 15 is like, you know, get ready, because it was just a little fluke. Don't don't be don't uh, don't expect it to go this way more often. 
And Kikoru has this very cool, like, surpass her limits right now kind of moment. Um, and she exceeds her mother's ghost. And it's really, really cool. I liked it a lot. It does give me that kind of Black Clover vibes. Um, and I like it. I really enjoy it. But I do have to say that I am uh, very much enjoying the story. So it's, it's not about uh, lack of enjoyment. But rather the fact that I kind of want Kafka to be a focus again. I understand that, you know, at some point... This is an ensemble cast, you gotta focus on everyone, but we've been far away from Kafka for a long time, and I really want to see him again, right? So, yeah, other than that, it was a really great chapter, and there really isn't too much theory crafting to do here, um, because I can't really think of anything important about this, right? So, yeah, um, did Isao have a number weapon? And if so, who ended up with it? Because that might be a pretty interesting thing to kind of deal with and what happens if someone with a kaiju also interacts with a numbers weapon you know those are kind of theory bits there but i don't really have any concrete you know uh, theory to develop right so that's really all there is to it i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please leave a like subscribe and comment down below let me know what you thought and thank you guys very much for watching see you guys later